So I'm here today with Manowar from EOL in Realm 1022. And today's topic, we're actually going to discuss blocking. So as a part of, of the events that I've been in so far with, with EOL, one of the things that does stand out is the way that EOL blocks and how important that is to the actual outcome of Elite Wars. So I thought that I would bring in the expert today and actually talk through how it came about, uh, the, the strategy involved here, and what EOL actually does. So welcome, Man of War. Hey, thanks. I appreciate uh, you inviting me on here. Um, overall, I would say EOL, the entire strategy of blocking has been incredibly important. Uh, it's viewed as important as advancing through each type of map and um, how we develop an overall strategy to start the, the elite wars and then obviously advance through finishing it and dealing with uh, longer matches and, and shorter matches. I've been playing for about three and a half years, started in 1004, merged with 1022, and then merged with, uh, it was 974, and that's when ELL was was created. I originally wasn't a leader of the blockers. I was more of a, uh, like a junior blocker when I first started. Dogfather, one of the leaders, uh, was basically my mentor and, and started me down down the path of blocking when we were breaking into the top 100 in an elite war ranking. Our approach was really simple. We didn't we didn't overcomplicate it. Uh, it was basically based off a sys system. It, once you understood how you would advance and how we'd break down each map and how every castle and the blocker team would react to the other blockers, that's how we basically continued forward. And then as EOL advanced to top fifty, and then even into top ten, we started adding additional advanced strategies and that was as simple as holders versus blocking or speed blocking or recalling which are all basic techniques and um, can be done on the offensive end uh, farther down the map as well as right at your base to try to protect and uh, we, we basically I created videos for the team they were map specific they were castle specific, and we just grew on that as the entire Elite War strategy for EOL continued to advance into our top 10 and then now into our top three. The blocker has always been a huge part of how we win these Elite Wars. Obviously, everyone knows Panda, Stark, and all these other very large castles we have, and they've been really good with knowing if they don't win the battle on a flank or in a middle, they know that they can have a time to rebound and refill. They get held up 8, 16, 24 seconds, get back in, and have everyone refollow to um, continue our strategy throughout the map. So that's basically how EOL has advanced and my involvement in it. So, so how many players do we typically have on the, the blocker team? You know, that's a really good question, and um, uh, mostly through trial and error and um, different strategies. We've had, we've had a lot of blockers, and then we've, we've also paired it back to less blockers. You know, the, the beauty of a war and order and um, how it can be so complicated when you get into stats and tech and everything, and then when you look at just a simple elite war where you're basically just smashing speeds and trying to get to land whether you want to be on offense or defense or just try to get further down down the map for for uh, control um those four simple maps create very unique situations you know and and so we basically have created different strategies and different specific um blocking techniques as go along with the different strategies eol has used um, and we've kept it pretty simple. Like I kind of said that at the beginning, Dogfather, he, he kind of had a, sis, a system that when I took over and then started to grow and then add the additional 
training videos and everything else that kind of related to getting er everyone on. If you had to step in and help or you were new, we could get you right up to step within one or two e EWs and you were ready to, to, to block. Everyone seems to be more on if you don't get the perfect block at the perfect time, then it's broken. And our approach has been a little bit different where we do have ways to protect the base and protect your columns or, or rows through these different maps to help buffer and slow everyone down. Um, and and it's tough. There's lag. There's, you know, your dog or your wife or your kid or whatever. And you got to deal with that. Um, and then, you know, it is what it is. You can't just blame the lag. You have to be able to fight through it. So we've always applied these different strategies and ideas and say, hey, this is how you do it. This is how you 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 advance and this is how 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 you hold and um and just basically break the map in into smaller units so we can be successful. And um if one's part of the map is achieving well we we definitely offer support and then try to regain wherever we're behind. And EOL has been super successful in longer matches and being in a good enough spot to win some 45 minute matches against a KO6 or, uh, or, or, or SIG. And then because of the power of the flanks and the great job the, the leaders have done with tech and strategy, have been able to <clears throat> like penetrate and win on the shorter maps with our most recent win against TLS. And they, they, they did get to our base on the bottom and there was a beautifully timed block and only one or two slipped through. And we recovered and were able to push. And that's the beauty of a smaller map is, is it allows for that. Yeah, exactly. So when we have a blocker, what do they typically send with their block? Um, we do run specific blocker marches. Again, when, when you're talking lag and so many things going on, we, we've uh, prioritized quick refills, get to position, um, perform the, the movement patterns we should be doing. And so... Defend, depending on on what our formation setup is and our opponent, we we set up accordingly. And you know, every everyone in the alliance has got their own personal things. And and I, I, I again, I give it to the ELL lead, leaders of the past and the current. On um, we try to get ahead of the ball, get planning dates in advance, get on calls, work work together, and then get the rest of the alliance on board as soon as we are. And like any group or organization, we have the disagreements and we work through it. Um, we make decisions and if they're not right, we work through that as well. And it's been really good. We've taken some losses just recently and we're more pumped about the next match than we are about the last two. And that's just how, how the alliance has been. Right. When we're talking about blocking, it's, it's both to block the opponent from getting through a, a certain castle at times right at times you want some to get through like we were saying you know like you said uh, let a couple through and be able to get it depending on on who your opponent is and, and how it all works but it, it's um also is is to delay at, at some points right so th the march then becomes pretty important because you you just want to slow them down as much as you can so if you I, i'm guessing like if, if you have your marches set up you correctly you might not need as many people to to be on the blocker team whereas if you're just you know uh, spamming out then and you don't have marches set up correctly then you depending on your alliance you could possibly need more blockers yeah no that's a hundred percent true um it's 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 kind of um on the blockers it's it's getting the maximum effect or enough effect to do the job but then be able to be quickly there a second time uh you can't be you know uh full healing every time a 45 minute battle you would you would just it would be so tough to have a rigorous schedule like we've had uh like that just taxing on pushing your tech pushing the other events and we prioritize the, the the ews and then go and say yeah we're gonna have we could have another three 45 minuteers and so we've we've been able to kind of um run run some reduced marches get quick refills 
make sure everything's working working right um and you take the losses in in stride but we do a lot of review um very well team team driven we uh we 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 keep it within our our specific groups and everyone kind of re- responds if you're not really meant to be a blocker you don't have to be uh there's reasons who we choose and the reasons why and not every every blocker has the same responsibility and that's okay cuz as a team in in any even sports everyone has has a role in certain times if it's at the NBA, it might be the sixth sixth man off the bench. In in hockey, it could be the goalie, right? And and we kind of use that going forward, and um, and it's helped us like tons with our progression again from from being the top fifty to top ten, and now the top three. How important it is that the blockers are on point, are able to recover if something happens. Is, is basically allows our strong castles to uh, uh, get to their base and win. Yeah, I bet what a lot of people don't understand is that when you're in a, a younger realm, a lot of times it, it depends in the end as the number of people go and the best tech, highest castle level person you have with you. So a lot of times you, you can just kind of power your way through on wins. It can be a speed win. It could be a timeout win where you can divide up the map and, and just take more castles and, and kind of keep that to the end. There's, the strategy changes completely when you get into this upper tier of, of alliances because there's a lot of balance there where you have you know a lot of these super max castles that are involved it's not you know like in where i was in 1567 we had a couple super strong castles with us they were not completely maxed out they were still in their 30s but we could blow through most of the matches just because they were so so much stronger than our opponents and so we ended up depending on that. And I've been in other realms that are a lot younger, and it's basically the same thing. But when you get into this top 20, top 50 world alliances, a lot of that kind of balances out. So you're, you're fighting against other people that are around the same strength as you. So then you have to have, then it really depends more on the strategy and that's what's super interesting to me about playing with EOL is that the leadership team is so focused on strategy, on getting things right, making up where where we might be a little bit underhanded compared to, uh, you know, another alliance may have more super max 40s against us. But, but because of the strategy, we're able to go toe to toe with them. So that's super interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you you, you mentioned that. That's that's uh, the nature of the game. Older realm versus newer realms. Advantages, disadvantages. Everyone's got got their points. Uh, the end result is if this is what we have and we want to push to number one, we have to use what 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 we have and. We've done a really good job of le- le- leveraging techniques, not just tech, um, and working as a unit to uh, win some of these matches. And 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 in the end, it kind of comes down to execution. But if if the strategy for an EW, um, you could spend you know a week in advance, three four hours a day, whatever it is, you can't plan out a forty five minute match. You can barely even plan out a six, seven, eight minute match because you just don't know what the other team's going to do at the high level. Cause you're right. You can't power through them. And we got some beast of the castles and they can do well, but you know, the TLS is KO six is the SIGs and there's so many other realms with really strong castles too. So the way we do it is we, like I said, I try to keep it to a very simple approach. It's more of a system and we try to execute to our best ability and um, just work at uh, making the chain, chain changes based on how the map's advancing. They push here or they push here or they hold back. How do we hold the map 
or how do we advance further down the map? And, um, and it's worked out really well. It's worked out like obviously better than expectation or sooner than a lot of us, but you know, hard work pay, pays off. You're getting to meet the group. So good. I'm really lucky. One, one great thing though, is that, a younger realm, if they start out with some of these strategies, that they're, it's going to put them a leg ahead, you know, as time goes on, when they start facing other opponents that have equal or better tech, they're going to win some of these battles because they're using the right techniques that some of the more advanced, um, older, more, when I say advanced, more um, strategy focused alliances are using. So I'm hoping that this, this does help out quite a bit, even with the younger realms. Yeah. Well, your channel in, in its entire entirety has been, uh, I'm, I'm not the only one that's uh, seen it before you, you, you came here and there's lots of content in, uh, in, in reading things, but your, your videos have, have been really good and, and helped. I'm sure lots of new newcomers and old comers um my ego is pretty small i i only run a c38 and uh i fit the alliance i'm a tool for the leadership to use uh, i can be shaped or, or molded and i can execute i got a great great group of blockers currently and we add and change things and everyone's good if there's a mistake you can bet your you can bet yourself that we are dev- definitely discussing it as a team and trying to make make it better, and that's really where the improvements come for for EOL and our blocking team, because the excesses or the success and growth have both have just gone hand in hand. And I know if you interview and speak some of the flankers, it'll be the same on how each team and how we've broken down our alliance when tackling. EWs at the top 10 and top 50 and now right at the very top of the game. Um, it's been good. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first thing that I noticed is that it's everyone is very team focused, not really focused on your own castle. It's how your castle can actually benefit the team. So your setup, everything, your tech, your gear, everything is focused on the alliance and how we perform as a group rather than how you're going to perform individually. So I really like that. That's a, like you were talking about in sports. It's the same thing, right? You're not going for the most points. You're going for the win. So I really do like that. So I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your time here um, to, to discuss blocking. And as everyone's seen in this video, at some of the examples of, of the way that things are staggered and and the way that things are done, I really hope that people do learn um, from this, and then I'm sure they will. And, I, and again, I really appreciate your time here. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it too, man.